My name is Chris Jensen. I'm moderating this. To my my left is Dick Henschel. Dick is the president of Hilton Audio, and he will be talking a little bit later about using um, MP3 players and mini disc players at dances, hooking them up to Hilton amplifiers, and various practical things about playing and recording your music. All right to my right is Bill Harrison. And Bill, a little later, will actually real time hook up the computer and do music recording and show you what goes into actually creating and playing digital music at a dance. All right. My role is to give you some background information and talk to you about the factors that you need to think about when you're making a decision about uh, going digital. Okay, so first up, what is digital music? Briefly, it's representing music in a format that a computer can work with. Okay, so from our, from our perspective, we contrast digital music with analog music, which is music on vinyl or tape. Digital music is music that we see on CDs, mini discs, or computers. Okay, digital music files can be in several formats. One is a dot .wave file, which is uncompressed audio. Okay, that's what you would get if you took a CD, put it into your computer, and extracted the file from the CD to your computer, you would have uncompressed audio. Um, what we commonly use for calling are MP3 files. MP3 is a compression format uh, to take what would be a 20 megabyte, if I'm using too much jargon, stop me, but a 20 megabyte computer file and compressing it to about a three or four megabyte computer file. All right, MP3 is a, one of the things you need to know is that MP3 is a lossy format. That means you are actually losing information when you do the compression. However, in most cases, the, that loss is not going to be audible to you or your dancers. So it's okay as long as you don't do it too much. All right, and the other file format is ATRAC, uh, A-T-R-A-C, and that's the format used by mini disc players um, to compress music on a mini disc. Okay, so that's a brief background on digital music. Second, why would you even want to go digital? If you're used to using vinyl, you're happy with it, it works really great. You should come in, throw it on your turntable, turn it on and go. Okay, there are several reasons. One, I passed out a chart showing the trends over the last three years. Over 50% of new music is coming out in a digital format only, either as a CD, as an MP3, or both. Okay, so that's one reason why you might want to consider moving into using digital music. Okay, second reason is convenience. If I can carry all of my music on something the size of the laptop there, that's the biggest thing, or say an MP3 player, or a mini, or an MP3 player, or a mini disc player, which is again fairly small, the size of a, about the size of boy a deck of cards these days. Um, and you have all of your music, well, that's pretty convenient to go into a dance. Second, longevity. Digital music doesn't wear out. We're just talking computer files. So the more you play them, they don't get scratchy. They don't get distorted. They're just there. Control. If I'm using digital music, I can change the pitch of the music independently of the speed of the music. As a woman caller, that's really important to me because I can um, do any, any scene call record now I can do by changing the pitch on it. And that gives me a lot more flexibility. Uh, for guys, that's less of a problem, but still, there are records where you need to change the pitch on it. You can also, when you have your music in a digital form, you can use some of the techniques that Bill is going to show us to remove, set, remove the scratches and the sounds of wear from your original vinyl recording. 
And finally, the last reason that I have for using digital music is it gives me more variety in that I can use some of the non-traditional music that a lot of callers are using that they're getting from non-square dance sources. And most of that comes in a digital format. So by switching over to digital, I have access to that music. Okay, how many people were here last year when we did this? One. Oh, hey, that's great. All right, I was going to do a brief rundown of what's new this year. Um, okay, and what's, what's new and different for between this year and last year. So this is my brief wrap-up of the news from this past year. All right, first of all, music, we've already touched on that. But the amount of music, if you look at the chart, the amount of music that's actually digital only went down. And the amount of music that's coming out on vinyl only went down. What's gone up is the amount of music that's come out on digital and vinyl, which means that you still have, you're still having choices if you choose to use vinyl music. Okay, but uh, some record producers are talking about releasing all of their backlists and their out of print records in MP3 format. So that's something to keep an eye on in the future, that we might be able to get all of those records that have been out of print forever. We might be able to get them soon on MP3. Now, other news on the music front is that Palomino Records has bought a record pressing plant and is planning to release records on vinyl, or music on vinyl, which means that there will be more vinyl options. So that's something to keep in mind also if you're on the edge about making a choice. But I assume since you're here, you're seriously interested in digital music. Okay, hardware. On the hardware front, there are many more choices for MP3 players. These are players that play MP3 files that you download from your computer. So your computer stays home and you bring your MP3 player to the dance. All right, there are a lot of choices. You can get really tiny ones, and Dick is going to show this later on. You can get slightly larger ones. This one holds, well, this one probably doesn't hold that much, but you can get ones that are smaller than this that hold 40 gigabytes of music. That is like 10,000 uh, records, okay, in the size of this or smaller. All right, so that's something to think about. They get there are more all the time. The features on them increase all the time. It's just like computers. You know, the price goes down. The amount of features goes up. So keep an eye on MP3 players as a way of playing your music should you choose to go digital. Also, um, hardware news, laptops. Again, the same normal technology curve. Price goes down, features goes up. You can now get a decent laptop should you choose to use a laptop for calling. You can get a decent laptop for under $1,000. Okay, so that's something to keep an eye on. Um, Finally, there's a new mini disc format that has not yet come out. It's due out this month called High MD. And they're coming out with a new disc format. And so you'd have to, you, if you wanted to take full advantage of this format, you would buy new discs. But it also reads old mini discs for those of you who have already started using mini discs. And the new discs hold a gigabyte, which means that if you use full compression on the mini disc, you can hold up to 45 hours of music on one mini disc. Okay, the other thing, the other feature that HiMD offers is really quick downloads from your computer to the mini disc player, and that's a real advantage. You no longer have to work in real time to record to your mini disc. Okay, finally, big news software. Um, in the past, we've shown one player software on the computer to play your music at a dance. Well, since last year, I have come across at least five different programs that are built specifically for square dance callers to play your music. So you now have a lot of choice, which on the one hand is great because you get to have competition and, and that's a good thing. On the other hand, it makes your choice harder because you have to decide which player to use. Okay, so assuming that you are going to convert to digital, and we talked about the advantages of that earlier, you have to decide what kind of equipment you want to use at the dance. And in that brief wrap-up of the news, 
Um, I gave you a list of what's available, but I want to add to that CD players. Okay, you can burn your digital music to CDs and use CDs in advance. Okay, there are portable CD players that are relatively inexpensive. You can also, if you've gone to the vendors, you've seen the DJ model CD players that are larger but give you a lot more features like tempo control and some looping. Okay, you can also uh, do mini disc as we've talked about, MP3 players, and finally laptop computers. And of course, with, with those various devices, you still need to have an amplifier of some sort, your microphone, and the speakers. Now, if you choose to um, get radical, you could also build up a system, like we have a box over here on the side, okay? That is a speaker that has built into it an amplifier that has a battery permanently connected that has a microphone connected and an MP3 player all connected so Rich Reel, whose equipment that is, can walk into a dance, plunk that on the table, and without doing anything else other than starting his MP3 player, start to call. So if you really choose to get into this in an extreme way, you can really minimize what you carry to a dance. Um, finally, or not exactly finally, but one of the things to think about is the factors that you need to think about when you make your decision about what device to use. Okay, first, ease of use. I think this is of primary importance. Okay, if you can't see the controls on this, you know, you're gonna have a hard time using it at the dance. So for any piece of equipment that you're looking at, make sure you understand how it works and that you can use the controls. If they have little bitty buttons on the side, that's going to make it hard. Okay, if the computer, if the software on the computer is really hard to use, you're not going to feel comfortable using it to dance. So be sure you check out what I call user interface issues or uh, aspects dealing with the ease of use of whatever equipment you choose. Okay, now as callers, we're concerned with tempo control. So for any device that you're thinking about using, think about how you will handle the need to have different tempos for different conditions when you're calling. If you're calling to people dancing on carpeting, you need a slower tempo. If you're calling to uh, a senior group, you need a slower tempo. If you're calling to teens, you need a faster tempo. So think about how the equipment that you're going to get handles that. And um, we'll talk about some options on that later on. Patter music. Usually we play our patter, our records, about one and a half or two times through. So any equipment that you get, think about how you're going to handle looping or playing the record through more than once. Okay, and we'll be talking about that. How are you going to see your singing call lyrics? Well, you know, it's just great if I take a, a record and I record it onto my little mini disc or my little MP3 player, well, where are the lyrics? You know, maybe you have all of your records memorized, I don't. Okay, so you need to think about how you're gonna handle that. Um, working with other callers. Gone are the days when we just walk up to the stage and riffle through somebody's record box. You know, if you, can, you need to look at their computer and see what's on it, or somehow scroll through all the songs on here and see what's there. So think about how that will work for you. How do you convert your music? What's, how easy is it to convert your vinyl records to the format that you're choosing to use? Okay, and that's what Bill is going to get into is recording digitally. You can record directly to the computer, which is what I recommend for every format now. I would say the best thing is to use a computer, even if it's not a laptop. Record to your computer, which Bill will show you how to do. Um, and then transfer it to whatever output you want, even if you're not going to use a laptop at the dance. Or you can record directly to Minidisc, and Minidisc has some advantages there in that the format is editable, so once you've recorded it, you can still do things like put track marks in, or delete certain parts, or combine things together. So that gives you some control with Minidisc. Um, Another factor, other than the ease of conversion, is the expense. How much money do you want to spend on this? You know, you can spend um, $2,000 on a laptop, or you could spend $49.95 for a portable CD player. 
Okay? There's a big range, and that's your choice as to what money you want to put into it. Uh, the need for a computer. So maybe you don't want to use a computer. Maybe you're intimidated by the technology. Well, then your choices of digital for digital music are a little limited. On the handout, I did a lot of discussion about what you can do with a computer and without a computer. Uh, basically, without a computer, you're limited to mini disc would be the best solution. You could also buy a separate CD recorder uh, and use that if you really wanted to. But I would highly recommend if you're going to go digital that you learn to use a computer, at least a home, a desktop model to do your recording. Okay, how comfortable are you using all this stuff? You know, are you a techie like I am or, you know, are you still afraid to program your VCR? <laughs> like Bill is. So you see, there's hope for all of us. All right, so that's something to think about when you're deciding which technology to use. Future flexibility, and by that I mean w once you've got, gone to the work of recording your vinyl, which is, there's no way around it. It takes time to do that, and it takes time to clean it up, as Bill will show us. And if you talk to Rich Real, you'll get really intimidated and want to spend way too much time cleaning it up because he's done a lot of work with that. Um, so you spend all that time. What if MP3s become obsolete? What if mini disc players become obsolete and they've got some new greater technology? You know, how can you take advantage of that? Well, if you have recorded your music to a, a wave file that's uncompressed audio, as I said before, and you back that up to CDs or to some other format, you will have that. And no matter what format, what formats come along, you'll be able to do that transfer. Which is why, again, I really recommend doing your recording to a computer and then turning it into an MP3 or a mini disc file or something else that you use at the dance. Okay, finally, and this is sort of silly, but think about the image. You know, when you walk into a dance, particularly with younger people, and you're using vinyl, what image does that present versus walking in with your, and I was meant to bring down my iPod, but I didn't, but with your mini disc, your MP3 player. You know, and if you have an iPod, that's even cooler these days. Um, so there's this whole factor of, hey, we're up to date. We've got computer technology. I'm walking in with my laptop. Yes, Bill. The question was, what's an iPod? An iPod is the mini disc, the MP3 player that is put out by Apple, and it's become, with it's a hard drive model, and it has become sort of a very cool thing for uh, teenagers and Gen Xers and such. It's, it's considered extremely cool to the point of if you're walking down the street wearing white earphones, people will come up and talk to you because you have an iPod. People will mug you because you have an iPod. <laughs> okay, so in terms of output devices, um, in terms of output devices, I personally think that a laptop gives you the most flexibility. A laptop gives you tempo control on the fly, looping, access to your lyrics because you can have them showing up here right on the screen, okay, um, and future flexibility and the image thing, okay. Um, everything else requires some compromises. So and mini disk, you can use it without a computer, you can edit it. Um, you can do some looping. You can do tempo control. It's possible. Okay. Uh, and it's got a sturdy media, and it's small, so it has some advantages. Um, and the new format holds lots of music. Uh, CD players, uh, I think they're hard to use without a computer. Uh, you can range from very inexpensive to fairly expensive DJ models. Uh, they, and the DJ models will give you looping and tempo control. I think CDs are a little fragile. Um, and you can hold a lot of music if you record MP3s to a CD. Okay, you can put a whole lot of MP3s on one CD. Remember, MP3 is a compressed format. Okay, um, MP3 players, looping is difficult. Tempo control, some MP3 players have tempo control. They, they'll uh, advertise that they have pitch control, which they mean tempo control. 
when you're looking at MP3 players, check on that because I heard that the Nomad 3 or something had tempo control. I went down to my local store, electronic store, and looked at it. Well, the tempo control was plus or minus 25% in one jump. <laughs> real useful. However, I was talking to somebody yesterday and they said they had an MP3 player that had tempo control in 1% increments. So that's certainly usable. When you're looking at that, make sure you look at the interface, how you change that, because that can make a real difference at a dance. If you have to go through three le levels of menus to get to the tempo control, that's going to make it harder to use at a dance. Okay. If you decide on a portable player you can you need to think about how you're going to deal with looping and tempo control and your lyrics and your organization and I'm going to ask Dick to talk about that a little bit later. Um, if you decide on a laptop, you need to choose some software for playing your music. Okay, and I've got a list of factors that you could consider for that. Again, ease of use is number one. Think about how easy it is to use it at a dance. You're going to be using it all the time. Can you easily get your music, play your music, change the tempo, do the looping, enter the data? Um, how easy is it to set up the loops? How easy is it to uh, display the cue sheets? Think about how much support is available from the software author because odds are you're going to need some support or you're going to have some questions to ask. Um, think about whether it allows you to display choreography display your singing call figures. Those are all things to think about when you're choosing software. So again, I'm trying to give you advice on, I'm not going to tell you what to get, but I'm trying to give you the ideas of what to think about when you're deciding what to get. Okay, so your process of converting to digital, and both of these guys are going to talk about that, but as a summary, you're going to record the music from a turntable of some sort to either your computer or probably a, or a mini disc player. You need to edit the digital files once you've done that. You need to encode, if you're doing it to a computer, you need to encode the files and transfer them to either your MP3 player or your mini disc or your laptop. You need to back up. Anybody who uses a computer knows about backing up. You need to back up your WAV files, your uncompressed audio files, and your MP3s because you don't want to go through that whole editing process all over again. So think about how you're going to back up your music. Um, and that's basically how you do that. When you record to a computer, you can edit your music a lot. Okay? You can do pitch shifting. I talked about that. You can change the tempo. You can denoise those old recordings. You can normalize. You can equalize. You might be able to remove vocals from non-traditional music. And you might even be able to add some effects to the music. And um, I'm not set up to do that. But uh, I can, if you come up afterwards, I can play you some music that a friend of mine made um, where he added a drum. He added a, a percussion track to some music that really peps it up a lot. Okay. I try to buy my music. This is how you get digital music. I try to buy my music on CD. This is by far the easiest format for converting to digital music or for using it on either a computer or an MP3 player or an M a mini disc player for that matter. If the music is available on a CD, I buy it, I stick it into my CD. CD drive on my computer, I rip it to a WAV file, there's software that you need to do that, then I do whatever I need to do, pitch shifting or whatever, and then I convert it to an MP3. Um, I try to avoid buying MP3 files directly because they're compressed. So if I need to do any manipulation of the music, I have to convert it to a WAV file do the manipulation and then reconvert it to an MP3. I've gone through one compression, decompression cycle, and that is lossy, and I do lose some music quality. The odds are I won't hear it if I do it just once, but I choose to avoid that. Okay, um, now a couple of other just really brief topics, and then I'm going to turn it over to my cohorts here. Um, 
One, piracy. Once the music is in a digital format, it's really easy to give it to your friend. You know, you can just uh, email it to them or put it on a CD or put it on a flop, not a floppy, but on a, put it on a CD, put it on a disk drive, take it over. You can send it, put it on the Internet. Don't do that. It's illegal. It's unethical. It violates the Color Lab Code of Ethics. And just from a sheer, purely practical point of view, it's going to cut your own throat. Because if record producers can't sell records because everybody's giving it everything away to their friends, then they won't produce more music. So just just don't. Just buy the music yourself and use the music yourself. So that's my spiel on piracy. Um, it's just a stupid thing to do right now. Okay, we always get a question on the legality of making a copy of your own music to use on the computer. And unfortunately, the Home Recording Act, only, which allows you to make copies for your personal use, only applies if you're not using it to make money. So there is some issue there. However, DJs do this all the time. They buy music and they burn it to CD to take with them to, to dances uh, where they're DJing. And they have letters from the uh, appropriate agencies saying that nobody's going to prosecute anybody for using, for transforming music that you've bought to another form. So I personally don't worry about it. I don't feel that it's unethical and I don't feel like I'm going to get in trouble for doing that. Okay, another question that we got last year was how to transfer your music from mini disc to MP3. Those of you who've already gone mini disc, but you want to start using a laptop, for example. Uh, unfortunately, the only way to get your music from the mini disc to the computer, given Sony's uh, mini disc digital rights management stuff, the only way to do it is to do it in real time. That means re record from your mini disc to your computer. So that's basically what you'll need to do. Um, there is some equipment available that I saw at uh, something on the web uh, recently from a company called Zytel that makes a little device that makes it really easy to plug your mini disc into the device and plug the device into the USB port on your computer and record that way. And they say it's a very clean sound. And so that might be a way to look at if you need to do that. Okay. Any questions for on just sort of that overview? Uh, Keith Ferguson, Saratoga. That's loud. Uh, my, I have some music on mini disc, and it goes back to what you were saying at the end. Now, I know on the side of my mini disc player, there's something that's called an optical. It's either input or output. I think it's output. Is it input? It's input. Virtually no portable oh. mini disc player has digital output. So I can't. That won't help me in any way in getting it transferred to something else. No. Keith, uh, the larger ones, the home units do have a, an optical output, and I use mine. On, on a full size unit. But the small ones, the optical is always an input. I've never seen one of the small ones with an optical input. I mean, output. Uh, oh boy, you're going way back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the benefit of the optical? The benefit of an optical is that you're not doing a uh, digital to analog back to digital uh, conversion so that you are getting the bits directly from the MP3 player or the mini disc player to the computer without going through a conversion process. The question was, what does the computer have to have to receive that? The computer would need to have an optical import on its sound card. Uh, I bought a sound card that has an optical input. You just have to make sure you get one that has an optical input on it. That's not standard on most of them. If, if you want to ask I mean, a question, it's, we want to hear them, please raise your hand so we can get everybody in order, okay? 
Tom Builder from Kentucky. Uh, you talking about the optical part. One of the big features of that is if you've already set up your mini disc and you've already put your mark or track marks on there, they will go with it when you do it optically. If you do it digitally or analog, they will not. But if you use the optical cables, all your track marks will transfer along with it. Okay. What I, what I tried to do was to let you know what is involved in moving to a digital uh, music setup. Okay. What are the choices that you need to make? So here is Dick Henschel to give you more details on particularly the hardware. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, basically, I just wanted to, um, uh, what Chris has already done, just uh, kind of point out a few other things with him. Um, one of the things I'd like to point out to people that are, are at the vinyl stage trying to figure out which way to jump, which uh, it's, uh, I remember a few years ago people would say, well, are we going to go stay with records or are we going to go to mini disc? Well, right now we got umpteen zillion options as far as ways to go. And one of the things I like to point out is that one of the big dividing lines is if you're going to go to a laptop, um, all the other formats we're talking about, whether it's some sort of an MP3 player or a mini disc player, um, the big, to me, the big advantage of going to a laptop, if that's what your choice is going to be, is the fact that you you're not dealing with just music. You can now also have your the words to your singing calls. You can have choreography. You can, there's a lot of other things that are possible to do with the laptop that you're never going to be able to do with any of the others that are music only. So that keep that in mind as far as your dividing line, as far as what your what your long term plans are. Um, a few things like uh, with the mini disc players. Uh, a lot of people have been using mini disc players, myself included, for several years. Um, the newer mini disc players have uh, some good pluses. They also have a few disadvantages. The pluses would include the fact that you can actually download on the newest versions MP3 files onto them. So you can get, regardless of even like Chris is saying, that there's new versions coming out. Even on the current ones, you can put up to four or five hours on a single disc. So that's still a lot of music on one disc. So. Uh, the capability is there to carry an awful lot of music around it with almost zero weight and uh, and uh, volume that you're you're having to carry. Um, one some of the other things to look for when you're looking at any of the MP3 players and some of the newer mini disc players, because you can fit so many songs on it, yeah, you should be thinking about how you want to group them. Uh, this is also a function on on laptops in that. If you've got uh, a thousand songs on it, uh, as I'm sure all of you are aware, at the, between the, the finishing up your patter tip and doing your singing call, you want to do a minimum amount of time to get from there. So put some thought into it when you're looking at whatever direction you want to go on going to digital music is how quickly you're going to be able to move around without it comfortably. Like, like Chris said, on some of the smaller MP3 players, this is... This is a small one, but it's they, they have ones that are even quite a bit smaller than this. And it is <clears throat> a little hard to read at times, so keep that in mind, just the fact of reading it. But also, if you can group your song so that uh, you can very quickly go from you know, finishing up your patter tip over to your singing call. The quicker you can do that, the obviously the easier it is for you. Um, a lot of the... Uh, both mini disc and MP3 players have other functions built into them that you should be aware of, such as tone control. You have the ability to increase, decrease bass treble on uh, the mini disc, the new mini disc players, as well as uh, most of the MP3 players have a, uh, a tone section. It's not usually something you want to do on the fly, but if you go into a hall that you know uh, you have a lot of bassy, uh, bouncy bass in, you want to take out the bass. You can do it on your sound system, obviously, but now you can also do it on, you know, if you're using one of these players, you can do it on that. Um, some of them, uh, this particular little MP3 player I've got is uh, battery only, uh, so you got to think of battery life. Make sure if you're going to be using it, make sure you carry backup batteries with you, things like that. It's just a new world of things you got to think about. One of the other things I want to point out, uh, the iPod and units like this, the Nomad and the Archos that have hard drives in them, 
obviously you can get lots and lots of songs on that. That's, that's not a problem. One of the things I think is really neat on some of the newer MP3 players like this one is there's a slot in it for an SD card. So you can add memory to it. And the amount of memory is getting to a point where they're, they just come out with a one gigabyte cards. You can put a card that uh, is that size that'll hold an awful lot of songs. So, and, and because you can change it in and out, even with a small player like this, you could change cards. You know, if you wanted to have music for Christmas on one card, you could slip that into the MP3 player. So that's another thing to look at if you're thinking about going that direction. Uh, for, for people that don't want to get into doing anything on a computer, but they want to update away from vinyl, as Chris said, there are options for you. You can go to either an MP3, I mean, a mini disc player, which you don't need to go through a computer to use. The other option are there are standalone CD recorders, and they typically have both the ability to do analog and digital. It's something you'd have to look at on a particular model. But if you want to say, all I want to do is be able to put my singing calls on a CD and take a little Walkman CD player with you. You can do that. You can buy the CD recorders that you can avoid going through the computer if that's not your thing. Okay. Once you get it into the computer, uh, I have to say you have a whole world. The world opens up to you as options of different things you can do. It's just almost limitless. Um, speed change. Uh, Many disc, some of the mini disc players have speed change capabilities. Some of the MP3 players have speed change capabilities. Um, that's the, the main things I wanted to touch on. I think uh, uh, on the handout I have, I apologize for not having a, a handout. So if people will give me a name, I'll make sure I, I get one mailed to you. Also, as we did last year with this session, uh, I'm sure we'll have it up on a website. We'll be able to give you a web address and go and download all the information that we have available. One of the things in the handout that I think would be handy for a lot of you is the inputs and outputs on all Hilton systems I have on a couple of sheets. And uh, that tells you what connections you need and where you need to hook things in for either recording or for playback. That comes up quite frequently when people are, obviously it's pretty easy to figure out on your own, but if you do a lot of working with other callers and all, you want to make sure which cord and make sure the right patch cords. One of the things I like to point out is it is a little confusing as far as what jacks you need, but actually, personally, I carry two patch cords and one adapter, and that allows me to go from what I'm using as my music source into any built system ever built. So. Uh, it's not complicated, it's just a matter of making sure if you do work with other people that if you have those three connection capabilities, you'll be able to do pretty much anything you want. Those were the main things I had. Do uh, you want to do a question and answer session? or Anybody have any questions specifically with me while Bill's get things worked up over there? Uh, Ron Marcus, did you say there is a website or you, there is going to be a website? Well, I, I, what we did last year after this session, uh, the three of us that were on the panel, we put copies of our handout and that information up on our website. Chris has a website. Last year, Vic Cedar uh, put the information on his website, and I put mine on Hilton Audio's website. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure with, with Bill, we can put up any information he likes, one way or another. And he's saying, what? <laughs> so anyway, I'm sure we'll be able to get that information to you. On my handout, on uh, one of them I gave Vic, the address of Vic Cedar's website, and he is very good about listing everything else. So if you go to that web, that web page, he will have a list of various places where you can get more information on digital music for computers. And in that listing will be, not yet, but will be, uh, after Caller Lab is over, uh, the update, the links to this information, these handouts that we did today. 
One other thing I'd like to throw out is that VIX uh, Cedars uh, website has a great tutorial for people just getting into it. It's very handy. Also, Bill Hyman is doing uh, on uh, Supreme Audio's website uh, how to put uh, your music to digital. So there's there's information out there uh, to help you work through the process. I've got a question, Randy Doherty. Uh, I'm not into the computer scene yet, but I've, I've done enough traveling around that the record producers know the pirating is, is going on. When, when you see... Uh, a computer that has every rhythm record, every royal record, every shopper roll record, every cue sheet for all of those, uh, and they're transferring back and forth. There's hours and hours and hours spent just doing the recording and the typing of the singing call figures. Um, is anybody going to try to put a stop to it or, or what? Or is there a site where a caller, after he does put all his singing calls down, is there a site that they can get the words without typing because I, I just, I'm just a pecker. I just peck away at that thing. and I, It would take me a long time. Um, while I'm walking over to this hand over here, wow. uh, Vic Cedar on his website does have a database of, of cue sheets. He, does, he absolutely does not have any MP3s up there, but he does have the cue sheets um, that are available for download. So that will save you some work there, assuming that you own the records. Yeah, this time, Jerry Silverstein from San Jose, California. Uh, also, uh, if you want words to songs, all you have to do is uh, go to uh, yahoo.com, uh, type in lyrics, and then the title of the song, or actually anything within the song, and you'll get no less than a hundred computerized versions of the song, which you can download. Also, I have a question. Uh, with, um, with our BMI ASCAP license, uh, with records, we can show them the record. With CDs, we can show them the CD. If you buy an MP3 file, what do you show them? <laughs> Bill Hyman from Marlboro, New Hampshire. Since at the moment I'm the only person in the world selling MP3s, I can give you that answer. And the answer is very simple. Just as you keep your invoices for good business record keeping purposes and tax purposes, so too do you have there your invoices for every MP3 you've purchased from us or in the future anybody else who might uh, license them and choose to produce them. Uh, that is, in fact, your license. Simple as that. And if you ever lose those MP3s, we replace them free anyway. John Marshall, Sterling, Virginia. I wanted to go back to Randy's comments and, and concerns, which I think are very real. And I think some of us have uh, seen and heard used uh, some of what we're calling non-standard music. And I know that some of our record producers are producing some stuff of that ilk. Uh, but at the same time, we all need to be really careful about taking the long view. Because you know what? I haven't found anything out there in non-standard music that's a singing call set up in the way we use singing calls. And we need the record producers keep doing what they're doing for us, and if we keep basically stealing from them, and that's just what it is, right, they're going to be gone, and then we're going to be standing out trying to figure out a new way to do business and, and offer entertainment to our dancers, so that's my long view, so I just wanted to express that. Any more questions? Okay, Bill, are you ready to go? Oh, yeah. Kind of. Great. Take Good. it away. All righty. Uh, Good to see so many people here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, recording. I have a couple of examples. I'm hoping that it'll it'll work uh, okay with everything here. Uh, hopefully you can see the screen. Oh, okay. That's good. I've I wanted to make sure I had the right file up. <laughs> the audience is owing because his copy of Cool Edit says unregistered. Did you notice that? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a free download. It's uh, Cool Edit 96, which you can no longer get. Alrighty. So it's perfectly legitimate. 
One of the things that I didn't mention earlier was one of the changes in this past year is that CoolEdit was bought by Adobe and is no longer available as CoolEdit. It's available as um, Audition for a lot more money. There are other options. For example, Goldwave. Uh, on the, uh, uh, again, Ron Marcus, the, uh, hello, Dan started? Time. I'm here until Wednesday, so no problem. Just hang on. Okay. Okay, well, the comment you made about about uh, Adobe uh, uh, buying out uh, CoolEdit, if you've got CoolEdit, Adobe also offers you, I'm not, I'm not sure this is still available, but it, it was available a couple of months ago, a 40, is it $49? Well, it was, well I, I, maybe I hit it at the right time. I don't know. But if you've got CoolEdit, you can get an, an upgrade. And I think it was $49. It's a downloadable upgrade that will change your CoolEdit into Adobe Audition. And, and Adobe Audition is, is what uh, it, the, the upgrade is to CoolEdit. It, uh, it does a whole lot more than we need to do, and it, it, uh, it does all, all the good things we do need it to do. But if you can go to their website, if you've got CoolEdit, I think you could look at that for, for a download. And then you can you can upgrade to Adobe Audition, which is a really super product. Hit it. Are you sure? I'm sure. Good. All right. Okay. Basically, uh, the uh, what I'm going to show you is is contained in a uh, a CD that was. A documentation that was created by a caller in Pennsylvania, and I think um, uh, Palomino has them available, and it's very, very inexpensive. It's 72 pages of documentation of recording music and so forth, and this is how I got started. Originally, I had many discs, and then I realized that there was a lot of old songs that I've had that I could not probably use by re, you know, using a turntable because if I record from the turntable into a mini disc, I get what comes from the turntable. So I started getting involved in this, and I've really enjoyed this. The Cool Edit 96 that I have is a dinosaur, but it happens to come with that documentation that I just mentioned. All the pictures I'm going to show you is also pictured in the documentation. Okay, so here's a, a, a patter record that I had recorded, and um, most of you all know that I have a very bad habit. Okay, and so I was taking a break, and I know that how long my break can be, an average of about three minutes max. But I came back in less than three minutes, it was still playing. Okay, I'm going to try and find the spot. Uh, which should be probably about right here. And this is a pattern record that I use a lot. So now you understand why it was still playing when I came back. But with the cool edit, I can go and take that out and still have that particular pattern. So to me, it is important because that pattern may still be available. But what if it wasn't? I would, could not use that on my record player. There's no way that I can retrieve that. So I went ahead and played around it. What I did is I wanted to show you the example that I took this and I left a little bump in it 
so you could tell that I wasn't cheating. that there, I can go back and take that little bump out. But as you can see, I have saved that music that I like so much. Okay. And basically what I did was when I go in and I record my music, I take you notice that this says ORG, 1020 Hoedown ORG. That is my original That's my original wave that I recorded from this turntable. And I just plugged it into here. I opened it up like you see right here. I go in and I say new. And you make these settings and all these settings are in the documentation. Once you set this, you don't have to change it anymore. And you say okay. And then this is what you see. And the red line means that I can record. So I put the needle on and then I hit record. And that wave file that we've been viewing comes in. When it comes in, it comes in this way. And this is how it sounds. heard that at the very beginning, but we'll show you what that looks like. This area here, I'm going to have to, so you can see, this is the noise coming from the needle to the record. This noise is in the entire wave file. You may not hear it as much because you have the music playing. It's been created, but it's there. So we have to find a way to get rid of this. And, and that's the, the, the time consuming process, but it's not a bad process. So you can take an ex, uh, a sample right here. Uh, you do not want to keep these, and I'm going to highlight them so you can see them. Those high glitches you don't want because if you take those, it's going to take that much out of the music. Sound like it's very hollow. You want to take a small portion. You're looking at this and maybe you're saying, what small portion? Okay, I want to show you. is I took a sample and that I thought was very small and I just copied it and pasted it to make it faster for you all. And then I would take that little sample there, for example, and I would highlight that and I would go up here to transform and I would say noise reduction and this is what shows up. And I will, I will ask it to get the noise profile on its own. And that's with that black area there and also that's kind of explained what that all means. And then you would then go ahead and go through the process of cleaning that particular, um, you want to close that out. 
the reason why I want to close it out is because I don't want to take the sample rates that I just have highlighted and then take the noise out of it. I want it to be out of the music. So I want to come back and get the full wave file back again. Now I go back to the same process again. And I say noise reduction. And those, the whole thing's highlighted. Because that's what I want to do is take that noise out. And so I say okay. And this is what it's doing. It's going to take a couple seconds. Actually, 17. 16. And I'm going to cancel this, okay? Because I'm just going to show you that's what it happens. And then, when I'm finished with all that, I don't want to have anything at the very beginning but a nice, nice, clean start. So, I go in and I will add a two second delay. You can choose how many seconds you want the delay to be before your song starts. Okay? So now when I play the song, this is what I'm playing. Alrighty? I do that front and end, two seconds. I pick two seconds because I'm to understand that if I ever wish to take these and copy them to a mini disc, that my understanding is that Sony has somewhere close to a two second for a track. So if I had a three second delay, for example, the Sony would kick in and say, oh, one to two seconds, one track, we got another, they start another track for me. So I don't want to do that, so I'm going to keep it as close as I can. Alrighty. When I got done cleaning up the music, um, I go ahead and then in the Cool 2000 and other products, you're able to do this within the program. Unfortunately, I was cheap and I waited and I missed the boat on the 2000 upgrade, which was $75. That's all it was. And then when I decided, I think I'm going to get that thing, it was bought. And it's now a bundle of, what's it, 260 or something? Yeah. So I'm happy with this. But so my next step is this, is that I have to go and amplify that music. Okay. And I'll come back to that. Because now I've taken a little bit out of it to get that noise out. So I have to come back and amplify it. So for me, I have to get out of this and change the front part when I first got in to amplification and then go there. This is kind of like what this, the song ended up been, uh, being when I got done doing my thing to it. Just so you can kind of hear what happens. next one I'm going to do very quickly. I'm not going to go through any process. I'm just going to play it for you. Uh, is that the one? Yeah. This one here is a song, and I did the same process of recording it in. You notice here that the it's a little smaller when I recorded it in. The reason being is because when you record your music in, you need to set your volume control. You go to your volume control, and you go to properties, and you go to recording. And you want to set how the volume right here uh, would be line in. In my case, it could be microphone. You select whatever your, would be available for you on your computer. And then you want to go you know, up and down to get this wave file. Because you don't want it to tip off because you'll get distortion. So I kept it. I always keep mine try to in the 2500 to 2500. So when I get done messing with it, it's going to amplify it and bring it back up again. So I don't want to be bringing it beyond and starting to flatten out the signal because I'll get that distortion. So I just throw that in there.
don't know if you heard it, but there was a pop there. Did you hear it? On the Jack stacks and all, it'd be a lot more noticeable. So I was able to go in there and take that pop out if I wished. Okay. Um, let's do this. And what I would do would basically zoom in where I think the area is. And I would want to get as close to seeing that area. And then all I would do is highlight and delete and match up. Anytime I would highlight and delete, if I don't like how it played back, all I got to do is undo it. And it puts it right back. And just keep on going. Undo it again, for example. Yeah, I'm going to delete that. And so obviously you see there's a mess up. It's not a big deal because I'm not perfect anyhow. So I do undelete and it's back there again. So I haven't lost anything. So it's pretty simple to, to, to kind of work around. And that's how I get my music in. When I'm done with all my music, in other programs, once again, you can do it right while you're in it. You can go ahead and convert it to an MP3. Unfortunately, I don't have those programs, so I have an MP3 converter. But there's one thing I can do that the other programs can't do. If I sat there and did 100 wave, I can use this MP3 converter, highlight all 100, convert them all at one time at my convenience. So if I was going to, you know, make something, uh, you know, uh, uh, an MP3 file, then I would just double click on the one I want. In this case, I set it up. I never have to change it anymore. And I go right through the process of making it an MP3. It takes seconds. Any questions so far on this? I'm just going to make one comment. Tom Dillner from Kentucky. Um, he didn't mention the fact that Dan Prosser spent a lot of time putting this together, making it very simple for you to use. And it is, I use this particular program every day. We do a lot of commercial work along with the square dancing for making CDs and getting things ready for vinyl. This thing is so simple to use. It's unbelievable, and uh, because the preset, Dan spent his time getting the presets the way they should be to use, and, and you, you're using it very effectively up there, though. There's a question over here. Bob Ierly, Apex, North Carolina. I wonder if you'd go back and talk again about the volume as you went from the vinyl to the computer. And I was curious as to how important that was to how do you select the right level? Because you're going from analog to digital. And, and what, what is the computer looking for in the, in the way of volume? It, it will look for exactly what you put in there. It, it, it's that you just don't want to, the reason I said it is that I don't want to overdrive the song. Because when you convert it, or even keep it as it is, you're going to get distortion when you play it out. So you want to set yourself, and you can hear, basically, always use headphones, number one. Don't play it and try to edit it through your speakers here. You want headphones. You want to have good quality sound come into your ears so you can hear everything. And you just don't want to have it um, when you record it in. And this one here, I'm, I got right below the 3,000 here. I don't see my cursor there. And I have right below that. Okay. I could have come a little bit further here, but as it's to what your ear hears. And then I'll play some of the songs that I have uh, and their quality. Um, I think I can remember. I do have one in there, if I remember the name, and give me time, I'll think about it, where I did kind of, for some reason, got crazy with it. So it has a little distortion to it, which, okay. Did I answer that for you? Uh, Stan Sullivan, Pensacola, Florida, on that MP3 decoder, is it a download or you have to buy that file? Or Actually, all this that I'm showing you came on the the, the CD, which, you know, okay, all of that. And there's other stuff, other shareware stuff that's on there um, as well um, that he included with the documentation. It tells you how to put it on your computer, and, and that's where I got that from. Okay, great. Don Rouse, Boulder, Colorado. 
I have a half a dozen programs at home, videos that I get uh, try to get to learn how to do this stuff. And it says you punch this button, this window comes up, and then you push this button, and this is supposed to happen. About three or four shots down the line, it doesn't even come close. I don't. I'm not. I'm a illiterate when it comes to, to uh, computers, and I just I don't know how to get around it. It says you can do this, and you can do that, and you can do that over there, but I can't. Well, you might check out, you know, look for some other documentation that maybe explains things in a more step-by-step -step way. Nobody is saying that this is trivial, you know. And, and if you look up here now, uh, here is the documentation, okay? And I'm just going to give you a quick, it has all these options here, how to, how to record. It tells you everything you need to know, and it's... He has all the pictorials, everything that you can imagine. What you need to do, every there is a picture. The things that I've shown you so far are all here. It tells you about the volume control, which the question was just about a minute ago, and so forth like that. It's all there. It's uh, pretty amazing. You spent a lot of time on it. It shows you how to edit just what I went through, how to record it in the whole nine yards. Al, Al Nopi, uh, Mountain View, California. Um, that went through so fast, I don't know whether what I, my question was answered or not. But uh, we're going to say we're going to more modern music or alternate type music. And the only record you can find has got uh, just music and voice. And uh, can you take the voice out? Um, I am. I'm sure that you possibly can. I don't know the full mechanics of that because, unfortunately, with the program I use, as I explained earlier, it's the dinosaur. I am sure that with the 2000 and others, there's many others out there that you can buy. Uh, I don't know the names of them all. There's probably about three or four people have talked to me about. Um, you probably have an option to be able to do something like that. It should at least reduce it, if anything else. Charlie Fagan, Torrance, California. Bill, uh, how do you re your recording source? Is it from your Hilton home stereo? Uh, no, the recording source I use is the uh, the Hilton 201. Um, I don't record off of a, uh, a. I don't. I don't use a 75. I don't use a, a 300. I use a, a 201. Uh, what is this here? A 205. Okay. I don't have a 205. Uh, has well, I haven't seen one show at my doorstep, but. Um, and then I've also used the 500 or 501. Is that what I've, I've used those too. But pretty much at home I have it, I have a 201, and that's exactly what I use. Okay, I would say that if you have access to a hi-fi turntable, that you should use that. I found in comparing the sound that I got out of a hi-fi stereo turntable directly into my computer versus out of a Hilton, um, no offense, Hilton is great for playing square dance music, but I like the raw sound better out of a, a high-quality turntable. I have uh, Bill back here first. Bill Hyman from Auburn, New Hampshire. I'd like to touch on a couple of points. At dosado.com slash music, which is in fact the Handhurst page, in the right-hand column is the digital music index. Almost every single subject that we've covered here is included in a free doc file there. It gives click for click, including graphics, instructions for a music match, gold wave, cool edit. There are a couple of others there, but it's literally click for click, in addition to which, with some input from Dick Henschel about a week, week and a half ago, I just put up a new document going from vinyl to digital formats, particularly MP3, but it, it's equally valid, and it takes you literally click for click. It tells you what software you need. In our case, we've created over 800 MP3s, uh, these are the ones for sale, of course, and we've always used Goldwave. It was always our editor of choice for a host of reasons, which I won't bore you with. But the uh, fact is that all of those clicks, if you will, all the links to that are all listed on that page. They're all for free. And the one that on um, the MP3 to the digital to MP, the, the vinyl to MP3 answers the volume control question that was asked up here on the front left. Uh, all of those comments are in there, and it explains literally click for click how you set that. Uh, it's not really as complicated as it looks 
Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Patty Green, Salem, New Hampshire. I just have a question. Do you record the tempo or do you record the key? Well, actually, that's going to be what I'm going to get into. I record the music just like I, were, I use it on the turntable. All righty. And I don't really care if I'm 45 and a quarter, 45 and a half, uh, 44 and three quarters. It makes no difference because of the player that I have that I use, I can adjust that with a touch of a button. Okay. Did the question was, what player was that? Oh. And Bill will be is getting ready to show that in just a minute, but we have another question. Mike Turner, Wichita, Kansas. I was just wondering, uh, you were talking about track marks and looping earlier. Would you go for that? Yes. I will. Okay. Um, or no, you will. Just briefly to touch on what you might do if you are not using a laptop. Okay. If you want to use an MP3 player, for example, or a CD to do your digital music. What I would do, if I were going to do that, would be to record seven or eight or nine or ten or however long you want your patter records to be. I would use the digital editing to create a patter record that was that long. And I would put that onto my, I would turn that into an MP3 and put it onto my MP3 player or burn a CD with that. So that's what I would do. With a computer, there are other options, which Bill is going to show. But that's what I would do that with that. Um, the other thing is tempo control. What I would do would be if I had some favorite music that I really wanted to be have available in different tempos, I would just create MP3s with that different tempos and put those on my MP3 players or on CDs. You have so much room on an MP3 player that there's no point not doing that and give yourself the flexibility to have tempos of any uh, of any amount. One more, and then let's go. Just a comment on the turntables, Art Harvey Las Cruces. If you use a high-quality DJ turntable, you can change the tempo without changing the pitch because it has key control on it, okay? So you can slow down your recording or speed it up, whatever you want to do, and not change the key of the music at all. That would be a DJ CD player? A DJ CD player? Okay, one more. Just a quick comment on that is that the DJ companies are coming out with uh, um, uh, turntables now that uh, have both separate speed and key control, so you have total control over both. On a turntable, that's pretty amazing. Okay, Bill. Um, this is the the program that I use. Uh, it's called uh, SQMP3 Gold. The gold is not available at this particular time. It's still being um, honed in and developed. Okay, while well, he's starting that up, can I just give a brief talk about this? Um, in the past, Vic has shown, Vic Cedar has shown his Cedar Square Dance system, uh, music, MP3 music players system. Uh, this is Dave Wilson's system. There are certain at least three more that I know of systems available. There is another one from Sweden um, by Thomas Benghead. Um, there is one from Germany called Callers Caddy. And there is one from Japan. Uh, and, and there's a Round Dancers one also that could be used for calling. So you have a lot of choices. Let me let Bill get started talking. And oh, I, yes. And excuse me, I totally forgot the big one. A big one that just came out this year is Digital Music Magician from Supreme Audio. Okay, and that you can see. Well, you can't see anymore because I think the booth is closing up, closing up pretty soon. But if you went by the Supreme Audio booth this weekend, you could have seen that. So. All right, Bill. Oh, I just, Lord. I don't know. Which one you all like? Uh, with this particular player, you can change the background color. As you can see, I just, I just throw that up there, you know, um, so that you can pick all those colors I just gave you. That's, uh, you know, kind of trivial, but as you can see, I'm having a good time with it. Okay. Let's see if we get this one here. 
So the okay. plate bill is changing colors. Of yes. These, uh, what, what you do here is uh, basically uh, we have uh, two columns here where the cursor is. We have favorite pattern, favorite singing calls. And on my far right-hand side is all my MP3s. I keep them in one folder. You can arrange however you wish to do so. This is strictly a player. Um, one of the nice things about it is that I can, you know, select. I can go from, you know, either one by using a control. Um, when I want to play the, the song, as you can see, it's called Cute Patter. If I want to go and highlight um, a singing call, it's also cute as well. That means I can use the hotkeys. And a space bar as plays it. This is how the music originally sounds. Okay. And then I'd have to do some controls there. Uh, but it has a built-in equalizer. And you can set it whatever you want to. If I stop the music, it's a space bar. And then if I want to play the singing call, then I just hit control space bar. I want the words, I just hit an F11, there they are. If that song, didn't mean to do that, if that song was maybe a little too high for me, then I have a pitch changer that I could do on the fly, okay, and that's just an F key, which all that will be there, so I'll play it, see if it actually works. software and see what's easy for you to operate. Yep. Okay, if I want to speed this up or slow it down, I can do that. Okay, if I wish to change the, uh, the pitch to make it either higher or lower. That's where we originally were. One down. You can, you can say speed's still the same. It tells you exactly up here what the speed's going to be. Okay. Um, it has the definitions available. Uh, if you were at a dance, for example, then you wanted to look up something, and there's the definitions also. I would assume that that's what they would do as soon as they were created and put out The question there, was, can you download the new definitions and yes. install them? Yes, and that is correct. Uh, it also gives the list. If you want uh, mainstream plus advanced, that will show in the same box as well. Okay, so. And you can see those as well. Question. I guess I'm a little confused since you're doing, using this, playing it back from a laptop. 
Why did you go to MP3? Why didn't you play directly from the uh, dot .wave files and avoid the compression? Because the wave file is so large and it takes up so much space that when you have um, the MP3, it condenses it. So, for example, a wave file is this long, and when I make it an MP3, it's this big, so I can fit more. So then you don't keep the wave file on your laptop. Yes, uh, no, I do not. Now, what I do is uh, my process of recording is is you saw the ORG, remember that, and then you saw the cleaned up version, and then. I burn those two to a CD, okay? Uh, then I also burn the MP3 once I've converted it. Um, you may not want to do that. You may want to just take the cleaned up version and burn that. But I stick that to the side, and I have that at all times. So it's just the process I do. I keep the original just in case after I listen to my cleaned up version for the 15th time, I may have heard something I didn't really like. So I don't have to re-record it anymore. I go back to the original, just clean it up, and now I'm all done. Scott Pierce from Fulton, California. Just to clarify that, so you, you save a copy of the original and your cleaned up music as a WAV file and keep that as a master, and yes. then you record all the MP3s onto your laptop? Uh, I, once I convert them, I have them set right to the player, and they're there. And then I, I go ahead and burn them onto a CD. So I have uh, a CD with the original WAV file, the clean version, and then I have a separate CD that I keep my MP3s on. And I burn all those. So I have one set of WAV files, and my WAV files consist of the original and the cleaned up version. And then I have a separate set of CDs, which are all MP3s. Okay, any other questions? I want to thank Dick and Bill for coming and sharing their expertise with us. And I want to thank you all for coming, and good luck with your digital music. Oh, if you want to give us an email address or a, a snail mail address, we will uh, make sure you get the handout that we ran out of. Um, just, just want to mention one thing about this this uh, player as well, is that it has an automatic loop, which means the minute you play the song, it will automatically take and loop it back. And loop means to reset, okay? Just like you would take your needle up, pick it up, and put it back down on the record. No, there were just there were, there were three handouts. Have you downloaded or played the dance? Callers that are involved in both, it's a tremendous tool because you can put your squares in. Like, I bring up a page on Wednesday night for a Friday night dance, and I can vote for that page and put in my singing, my pattern, my singing, let it just keep it up. Leave it up and just go to the Yeah. Just yeah. go down your list and pick them up. Yeah. The other thing I was, I wasn't sure, nobody brought up the, like he was complaining about, about uh, typing in. Uh -huh. I use an LMB voice recognition system. Oh, yeah? Huh. Just talk to it. Let it That's cool. It. That's very cool. Uh, yeah. You know, actually, one of our children...